Okay, so sometimes just need to trust that I am saved. No works, no anything like that, even though it looks like shit, it feels like shit, and all the other shit. Sometimes I just gotta trust that I'm saved anyway. I mean, apparently I'm not the one that actually went to the cross originally. Daddy is, or Jesus is. And he... He did the work, not me. So, anyways... I am wanting to get to this stuff about dealing with uh, anger, fear, shame, and the likes. Um, one of the lies that I was believing was that the Lord basically is only saving me so I will go out and help other people get free of this or that or do all this stuff. This is why he put me through this hellhole. This is why he put me through all this other stuff. You know, sometimes I just need to come back and look and say, Hey, you know what? Uh, the Lord actually saved me because He loves me. Uh, which helps because looking at that other the aspect, it's just a lie. And it just makes me angry. Um, and you know, there's parts of me that actually are thinking on that. And it's hurt on that aspect. And, you know, it is, uh, lies hurt. They actually hurt and when we're believing them and we're believing lies over our God. And they're usually lies to hurt us. It's like, what are we doing? We're just thinking of a bunch of negative stuff of the Lord. Anyway. Oh, yeah. I was actually wanting to hit on the subject of lust. That was the original why a couple videos of start, stop, start, stop. I was actually trying to remember. Um, what I was doing. Okay. So, there's a point at which where I ended up walking in the mall, and I ended up, uh, seeing a fish. Uh, sorry. I looked at a woman, like, picture thing that was there, and she was, um, she had lingerie and everything on, and of course, uh, was revealing stuff, and she was very, very cute, apparently. <laughs> um, and the next thing I saw was Jesus basically showing me a picture of an image of a fish. And this fish was banging its head against the glass towards a hook with a worm on it, and it wasn't even real either. Or, it, not only was it not real on the other side, but it couldn't even get to what wasn't even real. So, the aspect is, is a lot of areas, we actually take in these areas as substitutes for the real. The Lord did not make us for substitutes. He did not make us for uh, not having the real thing. Oh, you thought I was going to do some sort of convincing in and teach you. Anyways, no, I'm saying, you know, the Lord really actually wants you to be with a woman, and He wants you to have the real thing. He made it. He made her. He made you. Uh, he made you men. And you know what? Yes, He wants you to actually be able to mate with her, but He also wants you to not look at her as just a sex object. So, I'm going to talk on that, too, of looking at women as a sex object versus who they are. Um, when you look at them as a sex object, you're basically like the fish as well. You're not actually getting the real thing anymore. You're actually seeing an image of a woman. And you're actually, it's basically like a blow-up doll. You're treating a woman like a blow-up doll. And it's the same thing with women uh, towards men uh, when they're just looking at a sex object and lust so that's what it is so what you're doing is you're basically sleeping with the body but you're not actually sleeping with the individual you know, the individuals basically they actually got a heart emotions and everything and when you actually can get past the lust part and take their body off a pedestal you can actually see who they are which is much nicer um, 
you know, when, when you actually sleep with someone, here's another reason why I think it's a good idea to be picky who you decide you're going to spend your life with. Uh, being picky is a good thing. You know, when you actually sleep with a man or a woman, you know, women are used to the aspect of the man being in them or part of them being in them. Men obviously don't understand that those women actually end up in you too. Okay? And that's by uh, their soul and spirit and literally the parts of their actual being literally end up inside you. So, uh, intimately connected is what the Lord meant by the flesh becomes one, or they basically become one. Um, when you've dealt with enough warfare and everything, you'd actually realize that things try to actually connect with you. And, and it's really not cool. That sucks. But, um, so, you know, when you're actually more, you know, it's kind of like, just don't understand that this person, you're not just allowing, like, in your space. Like, all right, you're in my bed, I'm going to put up with you and stuff like that. When you're sleeping with them, you're saying, okay, I'm going to allow you to actually take part of your soul and knit it into me. And I'm going to go ahead and allow you to have part of my soul to knit into you. And that's what you're actually doing. So uh, choose your partner wisely. I, I don't settle. It's not a good idea to settle. And I don't think settling is a happy thing. And you know what? The Lord doesn't want you to settle either. So you know what? I don't want to settle myself. But when we can actually get past the lust, and we can actually see like an individual there, and it's really awesome. You know, when we actually sit down and say, okay, this is an individual, this is a person, um, and, and when you get to that point, you might even actually start wanting connection. Not, not like just 